Guys, I absolutely love low-level programming. That is no surprise if you've seen any of the other videos on my YouTube channel. But today I want to dig a little bit deeper into that love and I want to talk to you about why I love it so much and my personal belief that no matter what specialization you decide to choose for your CS career, low-level programming will give you a benefit. So for example, you could be a front-end JavaScript web developer, and I would still argue that learning the concepts of low-level programming would give you a benefit in your daily life. The same goes for if you're a back-end engineer, a game developer, an embedded systems developer, whatever you decide to specialize in as your CS career, my opinion is that low-level programming is one of the rare rare subfields of computer science that no matter what you decide to specialize in, learning it will give you a benefit. So it's, in my opinion, one of the most interesting and exciting fields to learn about just because of how transferable all of the skills are. First, we have to define what low-level programming is because it's actually a very uh, debated term. In fact, low-level, the concept of low-level programming itself is a relativistic term depending on what time frame you actually look at. So for example, if we consider today's landscape, where things like Python, Java, JavaScript, PHP, all of these very, what you would call high level languages today exist, that make things very easy and nice and friendly. You would consider something like C or Rust or any of the like systems programming languages, assembly, you would consider that to be all very low level. But if you go back to the 1980s when C was actually first released, it was considered a very high level language for the time. And in fact, go back to the 1940s when assembly was first being conceived, it was actually considered high level compared to say opcodes or binary. So low level programming is actually a very interesting topic in of itself with the definition, like it's all relative, you know? So that's actually a very interesting discussion on its own. But in today's video, we're going to focus on low level programming as it occurs today. So in today's landscape. So all programming is rewarding, right? Like if I have a website and I've got a back end and a front end and they start communicating and it all works great, you know, like the data gets passed, I can see it pop up on my web browser and the web page renders exactly as I want it. That's really rewarding, right? But I think load level programming is rewarding in its own very unique way. And in fact, personally, I am an embedded systems engineer by trade and I saw somebody say this recently, I can't take credit for this because I didn't say it, but it sums up the field so, so perfectly. When you do low level programming, specifically embedded systems programming, it feels like you are building a soul for the machine. That is one of the most powerful things I ever read because it is so true. Like you feel when you do embedded systems programming, because think about what embedded systems programming is you are programming bare metal on a microcontroller where that is the only thing, like there's no operating system deciding, oh, your program will run after X seconds. You are in full control of the CPU. You tell the CPU exactly what to do. You tell the hardware peripherals exactly what to do. The program does exactly what you want. You can even build your own operating system if you like you are literally building a soul for that machine. And it shows like, you know, I personally, I tutor embedded systems courses at my university. And whenever I find myself explaining something to a student and I'm referring to their microcontroller or their little CPU chip, I, I catch myself saying things like, oh, and so when you do this, he's going to do this. You know, like I give pronouns to the, to the microcontroller, I personify it. Because when you do low level embedded systems programming, it feels like you are building a soul for that machine. It feels like it's, you know, it's a real person because you look at it while it's executing and you understand every little detail of what it's doing, every single thing. And it is one of the most rewarding things in the world because you fully understand exactly what that little chip is doing. It's not like a high level language where there's so many layers of abstraction between what you're writing and the hardware. When you do embedded systems programming, your CPU is doing exactly what you tell it to. And that is absolutely amazing to think about. Low level programming makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside, but how does that help me build a website? I hear you ask, and that's a fair question. So let's talk about that. If you've come from a context like in embedded systems programming, where you have intricate knowledge of every little line of code that your CPU is executing, or let's go one level higher and you're doing operating systems programming, you're writing like Linux daemons or web servers or something like that. 
and you do syscalls, you have understanding of what the Linux kernel or your operating system kernel is doing when you call those syscalls. You sort of understand multi-threading. You understand maybe inter-process communication. When you go to a higher level context and you know all of this information about how, you know, your system and your programs actually work, if I switch to a high level context, let's say Python, I'll give you a very specific example. I want you to think like, you guys all know the dot split method in Python, right? You give it a string and you give it a token and it gives you all of the uh, sort of substrings that are split up by that token. If you've programmed in a context where that high level method doesn't exist or doesn't exist to the same level of advancedness uh, as, as you might see in your high level context. So for example, think about how basic and bare bones strtoc is versus dot split. If you've programmed in a concept where that sort of thing doesn't exist, you can actually conceptualize how that might be implemented. So for example, if I come from a context where dot split doesn't exist, let me think about how that might actually be implemented. If you look at the behavior of something like dot split, what it does is it gives you an array of all of the substrings and it's not destructive on the original string. So for example, strtalk in C is destructive. It operates on the original string, but for Python's to not be destructive, think about what it has to do. It has to understand how many substrings there are going to be, allocate enough array space for those substrings, and then in the, it's, it'll be a multi-dimensional array. You know, if you're doing a dot split implementation in C, it'll be a 2D array of cars or something like that. Um, and then you have to go through each substring and allocate enough space for those substrings because you're going to have to return a brand new array of uh, memory objects because, you know, you're not being destructive over the original one. So how does that help you in a high level context? Well, it actually encourages you to write very thoughtful code because that's what you have to do in a low level scenario. In low level programming, you have to write very thoughtful code because oftentimes if you're doing something on a time or resource constrained system, like I talked about the benefits of programming with constraints in another video of mine, you have to write very thoughtful code because maybe every second or every operation counts. When you're doing a high level thing, if you sort of understand, if you look at dot split, and even though it's only one line of code, you understand what that's going to be doing in the background, you can understand better the implications of that line. And to that end, guys, low-level programming actually teaches you how computers work. So think about this. It is crazy to me the number of people who don't understand how computers work and are programmers. Uh, because in today's landscape, you can exist and you can be a programmer without actually understanding how computers work in the first place. That's actually kind of a crazy statement to me, and I'm not trying to be gatekeepy here or whatever. It actually is a big compliment to the field because it shows how easy and how well the abstractions work. So it's a good abstraction if uh, little Timmy over there, who's like a nine-year-old, can learn how to make a Minecraft mod in Java, but he doesn't have to know how the CPU works in order to do that. That's actually how I got my start in computer programming. I was like 10 or 11 and I tried to make Minecraft mods, but that's a, a story for another day. But um, yeah, that actually is a big compliment to the field. If you can get people in and building useful things and they don't have to know how the thing actually works in the first place. But I think it is incredibly valuable if you want to dig deeper. Like you can exist in today's landscape and you can be a programmer in today's landscape and you can live in a little bubble where all you do is react and all you do is uh, put little boxes on a website. You can do that and live in a bubble or you can take the red pill and you can understand how computers actually work. I see that as one of the most no brainers in all, like in all of my decisions. I'm programming on a computer. I'm writing software for a computer. Why would I not want to know how the computer works? That to me is an incongruency that is only answered by maybe uh, it's just a job for you and you just want to collect a paycheck and go home. And that's absolutely fine, right? If that's all, if programming is just a job to you and you want to collect a paycheck and you want to go home, that's absolutely fine. You can write uh, mediocre code and it'll run and that's that. You know, you can do your web developer job where all you do is react. But if you are like seriously interested in computers, like if you're a real tech, you're a real hacker, you're a real like, you know, 
actually interested in this stuff, it's a no-brainer. It's an absolute no-brainer because it teaches you how these things that we sit in front of and we use every single day actually work. And there's another video that I'll do in the future sometime uh, on seeing through the matrix. Doing low-level programming and having this knowledge lets you literally see through the matrix, okay? I want you to think about this. If I look at my toaster, if I look at my toaster or if I look at my microwave or I hop in my car and I look at my car's center console, I can actually think about how that works and try and understand how that actually works and how I would make it myself, right? If I look at my, if I look at my microwave and I'm pushing the buttons as an embedded systems guy, I know how that roughly would work. I know how to do the button input handling on the microwave and then do the timing and then make the little tray spin in the middle. I don't know how to make the microwaves because, you know, we have like actual microwave engineers for that. But, uh, you know, I know how the user interface component of that works. I know roughly how all the timing works. I can literally see through the matrix, you know, like I go to my car center console and I see my, my car is like a 2007 Mazda or something. Uh, and it's got like one of those old seven segment style uh, things. I've built stuff with seven segment displays. I know how that works. Uh, you know, I know how my car's cruise control works because I've built embedded systems that use PID controllers. So I look at all of this stuff around me and I just see the code. You know, I see the code. That is one of the most crazy things to be able to do. And every time I do that and I think, aha, Yep, that's exactly how that would be working. That's exactly how I would do it. I'm going to finish off with an anecdote for you guys about my friend, one of my very good friends. He's very smart, very switched on. He's pretty much doing the exact same course as me at university, which is uh, electrical and computer engineering. So it's very low level focused, very electronics focused, you know, embedded systems, operating systems type beat and electronics. And recently he got hired at a company, which six or seven months ago he did an internship for. Uh, this is a company you've definitely heard of, okay? You definitely know this company. I'm not going to say what it is for privacy reasons, obviously, but you have probably 80% used one of their products before. Um, it's a very popular company, and yeah, he got a DevOps role. So DevOps, quite high level, you know? He's writing automation scripts. He's building pipelines. I make jokes to him. I'm like, dude, the plumbing in my house doesn't work. You can come over, build me some pipes because that's all you do all day. You build pipelines. <laughs> um, anyway, so DevOps, quite high level. And he recently told me about his experience and compared to the peers. So he wasn't the only person hired as a DevOps in intern. You know, there are a few other people on his team that were working on uh, various automation projects. And he told me what his managers were saying to him about his performance compared to his peers. It was night and day difference. They said, you are easily the best by far. And he's talked to some of these other interns who were hired for the DevOps role. And he's, he's told me like, yeah, they have no idea what they're doing. They are the kinds of people that will just sit in the VS code box, not really understand, you know, they're like, um, you guys know the Windows only developers? Have you seen this kind of developer? Like the, the Windows only developer, they're very scared of Linux. Maybe they only use Linux in the WSL very, very rarely, or maybe they use PowerShell on Windows every single time. You know, if you're a Windows guy for compatibility and use WSL for programming, I can respect that. But there is a certain kind of programmer that uses the same stack for everything. It's like Windows 11, VS Code, PowerShell. It's really strange. Like this is like an archetype I've seen at my university a lot. And it's the same archetype archetype my friend has seen in in his workplace but yeah he has been using linux for a couple of years now he knows all about this stuff he uses vim he's set up his own servers he's used uh you know like he he knows his stuff and it shows like his managers say your general level of competency is night and day different to these other interns because guys at the end of the day the final takeaway is this if you've done low level programming there is very little friction when you transfer to a high level environment. My friend has done embedded systems, operating systems, systems programming stuff. It is very easy for him to transition to a high level role. But if you are a very high level developer transitioning to a low level role, you are going to have a very, very bad time. Because here's the deal, at the end of the day, 
High level programming and low level programming are actually two different styles. You write programs very differently in a high level context versus a low level context. Here's the takeaway. You can still code in a low level sort of style in a high level programming language and it will work fine. But you can't program in a high level sort of style, you know, making use of all these fancy methods, doing all these one liners, using advanced language features. You can't program in a high level style in a low level context. It just doesn't work. So it's actually a lot easier for a low level programmer to keep their same style, learn some advanced features of the language, use them and sort of adapt versus a high level person trying to cut down how they use programming and how they uh, you know, do all of their stuff for a low level context. So there you go, he's found it quite easy. You look absolutely cracked compared to your peers and the management does notice because he got a return offer. There are a number of other people who didn't. Anyway, those are my thoughts and opinions on low-level programming, guys. Let me know what you think in the description.